welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, you are in for the best tree of your life consultant takeover. That's right. Get ready, they are dropping some dynamite. Our consulting team is incredible, guys, and we are so blessed and so fortunate to have them sharing tips and tricks with you today. And as always, thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. I am so excited to be here with you today, Britt. Um, I love podcasting with you. I think it's so much fun, again, that we get to be on video. So thank you for being here with me um, for this today. I'm super excited to talk about some of our stuff. How are you today, Britt? I'm doing great. It's fun to podcast with you today because we've both been on the road in offices this week. So it's fun to connect on video and get some podcast time to talk about fun things. Oh, you're right. You're right. My brain, I was just telling you, is a little broken today. It's it's running a little slower than I want it to. Um, Not broken, maybe just a little tired. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) And you're on a totally different time zone. Here I am thinking, I'm sitting here thinking, oh, she's just down the road because you live 20 minutes from me. (laughs) But actually, you're in Virginia, right? Where are you? Yeah, Virginia, East Coast time. So only three hours ahead of you right now. It's fine. Only three hours. That makes sense because this morning I was like, we can do your, we can do it whenever you want your, your podcast time. But yeah, because it's like almost dinner time. So I hear you. I get it. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. So Sweet. it's fun to connect on uh, fun things. So what do you got for us today, Tiff? Yeah. What do we get to podcast I'm about? I'm excited because I think this is probably something that you've hit on even being in office this week. Um, and I know that I have and that it comes up a ton and it's unscheduled treatment calls. And I think this is an important conversation to have because I don't know that anybody knows how many we're supposed to make, what that looks like, and like what the value really is. And I think one of the biggest pieces that I know I talk to practices about, and I'm sure you do as well, again, you probably talked about it this week already, is really how many times a person like needs to hear something right before we're ready to buy and really just remembering that when we're making phone calls and dispelling the the negativity that we tend to put into place for all of it. But where, what are your thoughts? What I, I, when we're talking unscheduled treatment calls, it's everyone's favorite thing to do, right? I know. And I'm like, has it come up this week? Yes. Twice. Once in an office. I mean, all, almost always in an office, but one big conversation in an office. And then I had another call with one of our awesome offices and we're doing block scheduling mm-hmm. and it's like, all right, well, we don't like in building those blocks and getting things in place, but like, Hey, we don't have enough of X, Y, Z. This was like big, you know, high production treatment to put in that. I'm like, I bet you do, (laughs) but we've got to go and we've got to make sure we're tracking it. If we're not getting that on the schedule and we've got to follow up on that treatment and make those calls and get in touch with those patients so that you can get those blocks filled. Yes, exactly. I'm like writing notes because I'm like, you know, we're going to do actionable items at the end. So I'm writing notes. Oh, always. Always. That's what we're here for. (laughs) I love it. And I think um, that's so perfect, right? Because those unscheduled treatment calls make a huge difference. Number one, I don't don't want to have to make unscheduled treatment calls. So I am, I'm selling that treatment when they're in the practice, right? So I'm going to work my tail off to get them on the schedule somewhere so that I don't have to do that follow-up. But if I do have to do the follow-up, I'm going to keep a really good record of it. So I think tracking your unscheduled treatment is step one to ensuring that you're, you're set for success. And then a really good follow-up. I think that's huge. You've talked to your practices about it this week. I set something in place this week too. Like we, we talk about this all the time because it's so important. And I think trying to say how many unscheduled treatment calls should you make is like trying to, um, trying to say like how many Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets should you eat in one sitting, right? Like 
I mean, I know how many Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets I want to eat, right? But is that very How different? many Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets are in my box? Exactly. And that's how many Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets I'm going to eat, exactly. which is also how I think of unscheduled treatment. I'm like, all right, well, how many treatment plans, if we follow two days, two weeks, two months, how many did I have two days ago, two weeks ago, and two months ago? That's how many calls I need to make. Exactly, exactly. So there's not a number. And then I think, okay, well, how many times do I call this patient? My rule of thumb is I call the patients as many times as it takes for them to be their healthiest self. So until I get a, hey, I'm mm-hmm. not scheduling this, um, I'll talk to you about it at my recare, or until I get them on the books, that's how many times I'm calling that patient because I'm invested in their oral health and their overall health. And I think you should be too. And I think that going above and beyond and making sure that our patients see the value in it. And we do that by ensuring that we're following up with them is key to success. And if you're not doing that because you're afraid of stepping on toes, you're afraid of um, being too much, right? We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of patients being upset. We think, oh, I hate when people call me. Okay, well, guess what? I would have scheduled my treatment while I was in the practice. So guess what? We're calling you. You have to get over Uh all of those pieces and just think like zero judgment zone. We're here to make sure that our patients are healthier. And the number of treatment calls that you need to make depends on how many treatment patients, right? Patients with treatment, you let walk out that door. And then it depends on how full you want your schedule. You make as many as it takes to ensure that all of your patients are as healthy as possible. Absolutely. And I think there are one mindset, I love that you hit on that a little bit, like, am I being annoying or am I being helpful? Yeah. Depends on how you look at it, right? In my opinion, when it comes to something that like I'm kind of putting off, it's helpful to me when someone reminds me of that thing to make sure that I get it taken care of. So like, to me, it's not annoying at all. And I think we can talk about some tips when it comes to verbiage, when we make those calls on how to set it up to where it's not an annoying thing and it's viewed as something that is helpful mm-hmm. because that's how we're presenting it to the patient. For sure. For sure. What's your, what's your go-to phone call? How do you, what's your verbiage? Yeah. How do you do it? Yeah. So let's say we're in the office and honestly, it's kind of the same no matter if it's a phone call. So if we're in the office and I didn't get it closed, right, didn't get that patient to schedule that appointment, I'm always going to let them know like, hey, Tiff, I want to make sure that we get you taken care of. Do I? Do you mind if I give you a call in a couple days just to follow up on X, Y, Z, whatever the reason is that they didn't get that appointment scheduled um, because I would hate for, to forget about you, right? Something like that to where I care about you. I want to make sure we get you taken care of. So here's what I'm going to do for you. And I'm asking permission at the same time. So then I, if I'm concerned about being annoying, if they tell me it's totally fine, yeah. I don't need to worry about being annoying because they've given me permission and it's helpful to them. So that's my go-to. Even when it comes to the phone, it's like, hey, you know, I just saw him a couple of days ago, told you I'd give you a call, following up on that promise, want to see how you're doing. Let's go ahead and get that appointment scheduled. If they're still not ready, same thing. I'm going to say, hey, is it okay if I follow up with you in a couple of weeks? Because I want to make sure I don't forget about you and we get you taken care of. So yeah. same thing that you kind of use that verbiage. That's my favorite go-to. I love it. I love it. Mine's super similar. I think I come from a probably, um, I think I think we hit on two, two easy spots here, right? So <laughs> there's the like cautious, like I don't want to overstep, which I think is huge because I think that's majority of us, right? Is feeling like we're invading someone's life or personal space or we're bothering them. But then there's also the side of like, we've got our, you know, our disc profile. We've got our Ds that are like, oh, I'm going to call you. Like you're going to schedule this, right? So <laughs> For those people, I think it's a, hey, I'd hate to forget about you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a note and I'm going to call you in about two days because I just want to make sure everything's answered. So I'm going to shoot you over a call. Let's chat, see what questions you've come up with between now and then, and then figure out a plan of action. So then in two days, Mm -hmm. and guys, here's the deal. If you tell someone you're going to do it or you ask them permission to do something and you agree to do it, you ding dang better do it because that (laughs) is how you're going to set yourself up for success. If you say you're going to call in two days, then call in two days. So at that two day call, now we're saying, oh my gosh, Joe, I'm so excited to chat with you. I know we had a lot of information just a couple days when you were in office. What questions have you thought of between then and today? Where are you at? So I'm opening Mm -hmm. that conversation for Joe to be like, oh, no, I'm good. I have no questions. Like, fantastic. Let's get you on the schedule. What's your schedule like next Wednesday at 2 o'clock? Let's get this taken care of. 
Like, let's get this handled. So we're guiding mm-hmm. them and directing them always in both of our conversations to the schedule and like how we, where we want them scheduled. So those treatment calls become less invasive. And I think that both versions there just took away the stress of actually like having to make the call because when you don't tell someone, when you don't set the expectations, they set the expectations mm-hmm. for you. I've set the expectation that I'm going to call you. So when I call you, it's not a surprise. If I haven't told you that I call you and I'm like, oh, hey, how's that? You know, we got to get that treatment scheduled. Now I've like surprised you. Now I am invading your space. It's, it's much easier mm-hmm. to feel like I'm a nuisance because I didn't tell you I was calling you. But bro, I told, told you I was calling you. Here I am. Let's get this hashed out. Like, let's just work on this and get it done. So I love that. I think that's huge. And I love that you you yeah. pointed that too, 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 because I think that that really does freaking help. The two weeks, two days, or excuse me, two days, mm-hmm. two weeks, two months really does help us to set that cadence. I love it. Yeah. And I think it relays the importance as well, right? Like, no, nope, we're not going to just like leave it here and forget about it because you're much more important than that to me and getting this done now instead of waiting till it's much more invasive and much more expensive. Like, I don't want to go down that road for you. Like, I know you don't want to go down that road. Yeah. So if you need a couple of days, they also have the time to whatever the roadblock is, they've got a little time to figure it out, knowing that I'm going to call them and then we can come up with a solution sure. and get them taken care of. For sure. I love that point. That is a, that's a good point. And it also gives them like that timeline to figure that out. You've said, I'm going to call in two days. So if it's a scheduling issue, right, I'm probably going to go home and figure out my schedule. Or if it's a financial barrier, I'm going to probably go home and see, okay, I'm, my chiropractor did that. I had an appointment, my reeval, and they're like, well, this is what you're going to need. This is what it's going to cost. And I said, great, I can't, like, I can't just jump into this today because I, I had no idea what we were doing. So I went home that weekend and I legitimately looked at my finances and was like, what can I, what else can I add Um, per month or can I just pay this outright for the year like what is that going to look like and on Monday when Brody and I went back in for our appointments I was like great I have an answer for you guys here's what we're going to do but if I didn't have that timeline of that appointment I probably would have just if I'm truthful with you I would have just come home done my thing for the weekend gotten in pain and been like shoot I gotta go to the chiropractor (laughs) like I gotta figure that thing out right but with that deadline it made it it made it so that I actually took the action on it so I love that you pointed that out by us giving them that two days, it really helps. For sure. And I love in anything and even in calling for unscheduled treatment, like we stick to the thing we say we're going to do because that relays one, the importance of whatever the thing is and the importance of the person in front of us. If I'm telling you I'm going to do something, you're important. I'm going to follow through on it. And this treatment is important enough that like, I am going to follow through. I'm going to call you. We're going to make sure that we get this taken care of. I love that. That's a good point. I think that's a fantastic point to wrap that up on. Like, I think we look at our action items and, and really just bringing it back to that, that we're here because we care about people. Um, and I think you were, you nailed it earlier when you said, as long as like, we keep that in mind, as long as we're going into this with that kind of a mindset, you can't fail. Like you, you can't fail when you care about human beings, if they don't mm-hmm. accept it and, and they don't want to be as healthy as you want them to be, that's okay too. But like with the mm-hmm. right mindset, you just, you can't fail. If you love on people, you just don't fail. So Go into it with the right mindset. And I think actionable items, Britt, you nailed it in the beginning. Track your treatment. If you don't know who to call, how are you, like, who are you calling? How are you calling? So track your treatment case acceptance and use that same tracker. We love the Excel spreadsheet versions. Use that same Mm -hmm. tracker to go back and see who you need to call. I would implement the 222 is what we call it. And if you need more information on that, look back at other podcasts or reach out to us at hello at the dentalateam.com. We're totally, totally happy to send you information. So utilize that. Let your patients know I'm going to call in two days. Call in two days. Do it. And then say, guess what? I'm going to call in a couple of weeks and just check in on you. Call in those couple of weeks. Then call in a couple of months. That's the 222. Okay. It's super easy. And then you hit them up on recare. Call your patients as many times as it takes to make sure that they're healthy and that they're taken care of. And then practice your verbiage. So unscheduled treatment tracker. Okay, so a treatment tracker, look at your unscheduled calls, your 222 for your follow-up, and then your verbiage. Get some solid verbiage that doesn't sound or feel, right? It's all about how you feel. Make sure it doesn't feel invasive and practice it. I love it. 
Brett? Absolutely. And I love adding on to my treatment tracker, yes. right? Excel spreadsheet, add a couple columns for my two day, two week, two month. So I can track the dates. So we make sure those calls are happening and it's a real efficient way to do it. I love that. Beautiful. Okay. You guys, that's huge. That's how many treatment calls you make. You make as many as it takes to fill the ding ding schedule. And if you're really fantastic, <laughs> you don't have anybody to call because they're like, yeah, of course I'm going to get my treatment done. So Give yourself least amount of calls to make later by selling your case in person. Um, and if you if you didn't, then set yourself up for success and really just care about your patients more than they expect you to. So that's a wrap, guys. Britt, thank you so much for talking about this with me. I knew you'd be fantastic and have some awesome ideas. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having to, having me. Like I said, it applies to lots of offices. We talked about it this week. So yeah. go out there and use it. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, that's a wrap. And uh, go implement these things and then let us know how it goes. Leave us a review on um, this specific podcast if you want to chat about it. Like, leave a review on how this worked for you. We love those five stars. We love to hear from you guys um, and really see what's working and what's not working in your practice compared to other ones. So, thanks, everyone. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.